Okay, here we're going to look at finding the inverse of a matrix using Gauss-Jordan, the Gauss-Jordan method or row reduction. So the basic idea of what you do is you've got a matrix A that you want to find the inverse of, a square matrix. What we're going to do is we're going to put the identity matrix on the right side of that. We're going to do a bunch of row reduction until eventually we're able to produce the identity matrix on the left side. And once you've got that identity matrix on the left side, whatever's on the right is going to be your inverse. So I guess one remark, again, recall not all square matrices have inverses. So if you're unable to produce this identity matrix on the left side, if you can't produce the identity matrix, it means you've got a matrix that has no inverse. Both of my examples that I'm going to do will have inverses. But, you know, maybe you're going through it and you end up with like a row of all zeros, for example. Certainly possible. Again, that means you don't have an inverse. Alrighty, so I'm going to just do two examples here. I've got a 2x2 two two matrix and a 3x3 three three matrix. I'm going to do the 2x2 two two one in uh, this first video here. Again, there's uh, that, that shortcut you can use if you've seen one over the determinant and you flip things around. You could certainly use that technique to find the inverse if you've seen it. But again, um, we're not trying to illustrate that process here. We're trying to show how to do it using row reduction, so that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so there's my original matrix. Entries 1, 3, 2, 5. On the right side, I'm going to put the 2 by 2 identity matrix. And again, my goal now uh, is on the left side, I want to make the identity matrix appear. Well, I've already got the 1 um, in the top left entry, which I want to have. So I'm going to get a 0 below it. So to do that, I'm going to take negative 2 times the first row, add that to my second row, and that's going to become my new row 2. So if we do that, okay, the first row, we just leave it alone. Leave it alone. I almost messed it up already. So there's my bad-looking 1 there. So if we do negative 2 times 1, that's negative 2. Negative 2 plus 2 will be 0. Negative 2 times 3 will be negative 6. Negative 6 plus 5 will be negative 1. Negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, plus 0 will be negative 2. And then negative 2 times 0 plus 1 will just be positive 1. So that one, uh, not too bad at all. So now, again, uh, we just want to get the, uh, this entry with a negative 1. We want that to be a positive 1. So all I'm going to do in that case is I'm just going to take negative 1 and multiply that by row 2 to get my new row 2. So we'll put that right up here. So again, not much to do in this step. The first example here, trying to give one that's not super terrible. So all that's going to do is it's just going to change the signs on the second row. So I have positive 1, positive 2, and negative 1. All right, so now all I want to do is I want to make this entry where we have a positive 3, I want that to be a 0. And then we'll have the, uh, the identity matrix on the left side. So I'm going to take negative 3, multiply that by row 2, add that to row 1 to give me my new row 1. So I'm going to go ahead and write down the second row since I'm not changing it. Okay, so negative 3 times 0 plus 1 is 1. Negative 3 times 1 plus 3 will give us 0, and again, that's what we wanted. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 plus 1 will be negative 5. And then last but not least, negative 3 times negative 1 is going to be positive 3. And positive 3 plus 0 will still be positive 3. So if we call this matrix that we started with here matrix A, again, what we now have on the right side, since we have the identity on the left, that's going to be our inverse matrix. So it says our inverse matrix will have entries negative 5, positive 3, 2, and negative 1. And again, if you know the other method, uh, using the determinant and just switching, uh, switching entries around a little bit, you could certainly use that to, to verify that you get the exact same thing here. But again, uh, that's the process. That's all you have to do. You just have to basically get the identity matrix on the left. In the course of doing that, you're going to change things on the right. The only thing that makes this 
you know, worse than that is if, hey, you've got a bigger matrix, or maybe you just have, you know, numbers that aren't super friendly. You know, maybe you've got fractions and other things floating around. But other than that, that's all there is to it. So if you want to, definitely take a look at the other example as well.